for this collab. It's the new TLP uh, hometown collab. And that means all of these groups of people are doing pours uh, about their hometowns. Now, I am in a group with Nikki, Nikki D, Karen Waterfall Acrylics, Jessica Winterstrom, Winterstrom Arts, um, Mina, and what's funny is, so I'm from Toronto, kind of a boring hometown, so I kind of stole Nikki's hometown just because the colors that we are, our little group is working with is Agapanthus and Echeveria. Now, two really hard words to say, but you'll get used to them. Um, so Agapanthus is a beautiful um, silvery purple, I'll show you downstairs, and Echeveria is a green, which you know, green is hard for me. However, I have the best idea. The reason I'm up here is because I don't feel like bringing this down, but I, hopefully, am going to make an Agapanthus pour. So what I have here is an 18 inch, I think, round, and I had my friend Janigan with his machine cut me out all of these little Agapanthi, okay? Oh, oh Lord. Now, so, by the way, if you want anyone to cut you anything in the world, um, I'm gonna have his link in my description. Jan again, there's Mo. Um, so, they're up here because I am going to tape these. Oh, Penny, you've never seen Penny in so long. Say hi, Penny. Um, and here comes Sneakers because he's jealous, yeah. Um, I'm gonna tape these, so it's gonna be kind of time consuming. I'm gonna tape the backs of these individually, and I think I'm gonna, Ugh, pour on them individually, some um, blow on them individually, and then um, resin them, and then resin that bottom, and then stick this on top of that. So it's gonna be time consuming, but you know, for TLP releases, I love doing fun, special, time consuming things. So we're gonna see if that works. Let's go downstairs. I haven't picked colors yet, other than those two. Uh, wish luck, bye. Okay, it's mixing time. I took phthalo green and added some zinc white to it. That is Holbein shadow green, which I love, and a TLP interference shimmer, which is a kind of blue to green interference. So now I'm making my uh, custom colors to see what I can do because I don't really have many greens. I'm not really a green person. So I took some of that phthalo green and I'm just adding more white because I wanted to get a really light color. I'm really obsessed with like light minty greens and I call that like a Martha Stewart green. So that is the Agapanthus, really pretty. That is um, Amsterdam uh, light violet and now I'm making my own custom perps with Dyx purple and I uh, added a little bit of white to it to lighten it up. And I think I'm gonna make an even lighter purple with that permanent violet, which is really pretty. I really like this idea. Okay, so I'm ready to go. However, I have opened up a new can of color to go. Now, they are back in production. However, they're very unreliable. A lot of people in the States have been complaining that theirs comes very thin and they can't use it. This and the ones I've been getting have been too thick. And too thick is no good because that's when you get cracks, it doesn't move off, etc. So for a white, I think I'm still gonna stick with my gluten essentials, although it's a shame because I love the cells I get with this. However, for a quick fix because I don't have any essentials mixed up, what I have is an untinted deep base, which is much thinner. Now, I do bloom with these, um, this is the ultra deep. I bloom with the deep base, which is a light blue. Uh, it gives you a very flowy look. So if you're looking for kind of a thinner, not as many popping cells, but really pretty, you definitely can use that on its own. But for today, I'm actually gonna show you a little bit of a fix so you can add a lot of things to thin your pillow paint people ask but look at how first of all gloopy this is um you can add a little bit of us floetrol i've added a bit of australian floetrol you can use gap i mean it's really hard and it's really annoying that we have to kind of sometimes doctor it up but that's just the 
what we got to deal with. Now, ugh. so there's still some like, I don't mix it perfectly, but I'm just going to thin it out like this. Now, some people also thin it out with bare 8300. I don't love doing that just because the bare is so glossy and you don't want your pillow paint to be super glossy. Obviously, and doing this right before you pour isn't great either because you're going to get bubbles, but whatever, right? So let's see the consistency. Now, you do want your pillow paint thicker than your um, pouring medium, but it's doing the drip test is hard to tell, and sometimes you can't tell until you just kind of pour. So I think we're going to be okay with this. Maybe I'll make it a bit thicker. Um, like I said, when you're doing swipes, they're much more forgiving than blooms. So if I was doing a bloom this size, I definitely would be more concerned about what consistency my pillow was. Let's see. Okay, we should be okay. And with this pillow, it really spreads. So I try not to put too much because it spins off really fast. All right, let's get to work actually, right? Instead of talking here. And of course, I ran out of gloves, so whatever. So what I'm gonna do before anything is I'm just gonna put a dot of paint right under there, just to help it not move when I spin around. Yeah, okay. I have all my little agapanthus sitting up at the side ready to do that. This is a very detailed thing I'm doing. Okay, so. I don't want to put too much. I think probably good. Okay. And I'm going to spread out the sides as I do. And this is going to flow right off. So I'm imagining, normally I do this with my hand, but I don't want to get too messy. <laughs> I'm imagining like kind of like um, grassy leaves. So I'm gonna probably do multiple swipes. I just do this so when I spin, it doesn't get stuck anywhere. I didn't do a great job of it, but whatever, right? Okay, let's put this here. Let's see how we're doing. We go like this, good, yeah. So the swiper I'm going to use today. Blue Blaze out is my number one swiper from Food Art Company. You can see I've never used it. Brand new. It's going to get really messy today. So what I'm thinking is either I could do, hmm, I could just load this up with colors and do this. Ugh, that's kind of tricky. Or do I just do a line of color and make grass from that? You know what, let's do a line of color and see how it goes, right? I just want to get these boo blaze out. Okay, so let's discuss what we're doing. I have a white cell activator. I think my top color is going to be the dark. So let's build it from that way. So why don't I start with the medium phthalo mixture that I made. I'm probably going to pour it here. And then see what happens, right? I don't know what I'm doing. I've never kind of done the whatever I'm planning before, so <laughs> you never know. Okay, on top of that, why don't I put the Pinot Gris, right? So give it a nice depth to it. Okay, on top of that, I'll do my Martha Stewart green. Oh, she really, really thickened up, didn't she? All right. Ooh, you have to be careful with it, right? Okay. Then I'll do the famous Eka Varia. We want her to be the, it's so pretty actually. I really see it. I, you guys can't see it, but in the warm light, the gold flex in it really pretty and you know i'm not a green a greenie okay and now hmm i'm wondering should i load my palette knife with the color or just the white hmm we'll do just the white okay 
Let's see. And then we'll kind of see, I'm going to make grasses or something. Luckily, if it's ugly, um, I can cover it somewhat with the flowers, right? Okay, so I have my white shelly art cell activator, which I eyeballed, of course, about three to one. I like it to be a bit thicker. And I'm just going to frost just for a bit. And I take my um, stick and I just kind of spread it out like that. Okay, so let's just get to swiping. Make sure I start in the middle. Maybe, why not, right? We don't care. I don't know what I'm doing. Just making some grass. I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> I'm gonna clean my tool and keep making some grass. Did I make grass? Okay. Making some grass. I'm just going to keep saying making grass as I make grass and it will make it, <laughs> I'm going to will it into grass. You know what I mean? So I decided to speed up this part because making grass isn't that <laughs> exciting. I did feel like very Nikki D with my, you know, swipey grassy situation. Um, and I thought it was pretty fun. And I think I was happy with the result at the time. You'll see um, at the end of this, the sparkle uh, and with the echeveria is super awesome. So I started spinning and I really wanted to get somewhat of a good composition. I had a lot of negative space and I wasn't really sure what shape I was going for. So I just kind of kept spinning and stretching back and forth. And I thought um, I ended up with a pretty grassy situation. So here she is uh, with a close up. This is still wet. So you'll see sparkle amazing, of course. Um, I will expect my cells to warp a little bit and to melt a little bit because I did use a lot of piggies and not a lot of tube paints, but that's okay because I'm not expecting, I'm not hoping for perfect cells because most of them are going to be covered up anyways. Okay, so I put that away. I think I'm going to just take this little cup here and you see this is all taped in the back and I guess like, oh, okay. This one's gonna be challenging. I don't know what I was thinking, to be honest. Like, all right, let me put a bit of tape, I mean, a little um, glue on the back, a little glue under here. Glue, it's paint, but you know what I mean. Okay, is this gonna happen? I don't know. Do I have a, a plan B? No, I do not. So just letting you know. Like, you know what I mean? So, yeah, there's a better way to do it if, I mean, but it's hard, but yeah. Okay, whatever. Don't panic, everybody. <laughs> do not panic. So, I just want to warn everyone, the cells and lacing is not going to look beautiful. Like, it's probably going to sink and do weird things, but that's okay. Hmm. Wait, I mean, okay, don't worry. I'm just having, I'm having one thought. I'm going to try to bloom and it's not really going to work. And I think we're not going to bloom on them after this doesn't work. I'm just going to stretch colors <coughs> over them. Excuse me. Okay. So that was the violet, um, the Amsterdam. This is the TLP twilight. I don't see, cause I don't really know what I'm doing, you know? Okay. This was my custom purple. Yeah, I feel like the bloom is not going to work. It's okay. And Agapanthus. So pretty. Okay. And the dark, whatever, purple I made. Okay. And it's like a waste of paint, right? Because it's all... Wait, don't be so negative, Lisa. Okay, I won't. But well, let's just see. Oh, sorry. I don't know if you even saw that. I probably didn't blow properly for your view, but it could 
happen, but what will happen is because it's not going to spin evenly, is I don't even let me see if I see the sparkle at all. Like a little bit, but it's not very cute. And then because <laughs> the paint is like uneven, it's not going to blow very well. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is try it without cell activator. Although this is kind of cute, I'm not going to lie. But you see, then I have to like do this with the sides. I guess I can paint them after. Um, it's actually cute. So, but it's not like, well, it's, like, it's kind of cute, like right here. Okay, let me try one more with more paint. And just, it's just going to be like a paint waster. But we don't care, right? Because that's really cute. Okay. I'm gonna put her back. See, I was negative, but like maybe I shouldn't be, you know? Like negative attitude doesn't get you anywhere, does it? All right, I'm gonna load. See what happened was my blow didn't go over some of the petals because there wasn't enough paint on them. So I'm just gonna like make it a thick layer so when I blow it goes way overboard, okay? Extra paint here, here. Yeah, just like paint it up. And to be honest, I don't think I need that many colors, although those colors look really pretty. Okay, I'm just going to do the same thing. But I'm going to like, look, I'm just like going, wow, look at all this crazy paint I'm doing. You know what I mean? I'm never doing crazy shapes again, guys. It's going to give me a heart attack. It's okay. It's worth it. Because that was cute. Okay, just a little bit of this, like, you know. We're just, who cares? We're so relaxed about this whole thing. Totally amazing. Okay. So you notice I put a lot, a lot of paint. I'm sure there's an expert out there who knows a better way to do this. So send me a note. Okay. Okay, cute. Like, let's get, is it gonna be perfect? No, is it gonna be kind of cute? Yes, and look at the cute like drippies off the side, right? Oh God. Okay, maybe I got my groove back, right? Like, they're very cute. If I didn't blow into the pillow so hard on the, on the sides here, you know? Right? And is there a sparkle? Yes, definite sparks. I do want the agapanthus. You know what I'm going to do? Just because no one's the boss of me. These white parts, I'm just going to like do what I want. There. Agapanthus right on top. No one can stop me. See? So there. Um, there we go. So that's cute. And definitely sparkly. No one can tell me it isn't. Okay, so I finished them. I wanted to show you the sparkle in the light. <clears throat> this is what they all look like. Now, for funsies, a few I did just plain agapanthus to throw in the mix. So here they are. That took a really long time. Here, I'll go do a close up actually. So, oh, not a good light right now, but I'm not going to move them. But they kind of are cute. And hopefully they'll look good on top of her. All right, let's wait and see. Hello. So I'm in my kitchen because my easel broke and we have a bloom emergency. I do not like this final product. The sparkle and the color we love, uh, but the sh it's, I don't know what I was thinking. I do not like the white negative space with the agapanthus on top. So we are gonna be doing some hand painting. So this is basically a picture um, that I printed that I'm gonna be going off. It's gonna be very abstract. But what I've done is I've made a few piggies into a type of paint to paint with a brush. Not really, it's still gonna be a glaze, but what I've done 
is just like normal, I disperse my piggy in Josonia and I add this Pebio Brilliant Bindex, Bindex Brilliant, okay. Um, it's very thin, so I just squeeze it in just to thicken it up a bit, just so I can brush it on with a brush. So this is the Agapanthus that I'm gonna use. I've also mixed up TLP Emerald, TLP Echeveria, and TLP Aspen with a bunch, not a bunch, I have some two paint colors here that I'm gonna try to play around with. So this portion I sped up as well. I just took some green and white and a little bit of the shadow green that I used um, in the first swipe and I'm just kind of layering and really making um, trying to make grass now it's important when you're hand painting you don't have to be an artist to do this one of the important things you have to remember if you do attempt something like this and you don't really feel confident in art is take a picture and go with it and look at the shapes rather than saying I'm going to make a straight line for a grass because grass is straight because really in nature nothing really is straight so you want to make the suggestion of grass and that's what I did by kind of layering and you're always making sure that when you're looking at it where your eye is going. You don't want your eye to go somewhere that's sticking out that doesn't look like it kind of blends or belongs. So what I'm doing now is I'm taking a dark color and I wanted to ground to the bottom to give kind of weight to everything and for all the grass to kind of grow from there. And I just kind of kept layering and going back and forth and seeing what I liked. And then I would take some white and some light color and make some um, highlights with it. And really anywhere where I saw a line that I didn't like, I would kind of go over it and make it less noticeable. Once I finished with my acrylic grasses, I took my glazes and started glazing over the grass. I really wanted a soft look and I knew that glazing over with the piggies would really make a nice sparkle. Now, you don't necessarily want sparkle over the whole, I mean, I would love sparkle over the whole thing, but most people wouldn't really like that because your eye has nowhere to rest. So I didn't glaze everything sparkly. Um, I glazed certain areas in the grass to make them pop. And now it's time to make the agapanthus. So I did the same thing. I just took um, amethyst purple and white and I started placing and suggesting where there would be petals and making kind of clumps here and there. And just by using shadow and just by using white with the purple uh, in different areas, it really gave it kind of a 3D look. And again, I'm not doing perfect petals or being really fussy with what it looks like. I'm just taking my brush and plumping it down in different directions and making a suggestion of what it could look like because this is really more abstract and it doesn't have to look perfect. You just want the shading and the coloring really to make that suggestion. And I think they kind of turned out really cute. And once I did that, I then took my Agapanthus glaze and glazed over some of the petals as well to make them pop. And I really enjoying the 3D look effect that this gave. Okay, so the last step of what I've done is over the flowers I've taken my agapanthus mix and just kind of going over so it has when i resin over it might have like a bit of sparkle I, I tinted it so i think i'm okay with how it's looking i feel much better um i think than i did right like it's not going to look like this at the end but when i put my agapanthus on at least i will i could cover up things i don't like or i don't know i mean it's hard to tell what it's gonna look like but you see, it's like still gonna have its sparkle, if you can see. Um, okay. Oh God, wish me luck. Okay, next I'm gonna resin this when it dries, obviously. And I'm gonna resin my agapanthus, uh, which is gonna be annoying. And then when they're dry, I'm going to like place them where I want, then glue them on and have an amazing agapanthus experience. <laughs> I hope. Okay, see you soon. 
Okay, it's resin time. Look at how that sparkle just pops up immediately when uh, it's under resin. I'm really happy that I um, glazed it, glazed those uh, areas, because you could really see that sparkle pop. It makes it more interesting, in my opinion. So that was the big round. And for the agapanthus, they were a little more fussy. It's kind of hard because I was holding the camera uh, with one hand, but there they are, little agapanthus. Okay, I want to show you the finished resin product. I'm so glad that I glazed piggies over where I painted because you can see the amazing kind of depth and shimmer. And like, for instance, this agapanthus, you can see I glazed over this one. I did it so you can see the difference. And I love how it makes everything pop. So this is, I mean, this is cute the way it is. Let's see what happens when I stick on the agapanthus. Okay, guys, this is the final product. I love her. So what I did was I cleaned the back of the agapanthus and I glued them down where I wanted them. Um, like I said, like the sparkle in the background makes me so happy. And then added with the sparkle of all these agapanthus. I'm so glad I in added the interference color in there. It gives a really fun pop of color. And I hope you guys enjoyed this amazing collab. This is probably one of my favorite collabs so far. Please go visit all of the other videos in my description to see everyone play with all the new releases. You can get all these piggies at fluid-art.co. We love her. Let me know what you think. Love you guys. Bye.